Hello, hey everybody, welcome to the stream. Let me just uh, make sure everything's loaded up properly, etc., etc. Okay, I can see the chat. All right, so welcome back. This is part two of the making of Spires. Uh, that's a working title. I don't know for sure if we're going to keep that title. Um, but yeah, this is kind of, you know, how, what I'm working on. My my plan here I've got from before. Um, what I want to work on today in particular, you can see on the left or above my uh, above my head here, I guess I can point to it. Um, I've got, uh, that's the feed running out of the Pico 8. So you can see what I've got so far. I've got these lines here. They're moving, you know, they're wiggling back and forth as I planned. Today, the thing that I want to work on is these rectangles. Um, there's going to be rectangles sliding down. Um, there's a lot of open questions I have about these rectangles, like do all the points move down at the same rate? So in other words, the rectangles are not going to be perfect. Some of them are going to be slanted. Um, some of them are going to be more trapezoidal. Um, do I want them to retain the same shape for the entire duration they're on the screen, or do I want all four vertices to be wiggling around? I don't know. Um, I guess we'll just see whatever looks better or whatever seems easier to code first. Um, there's something I wanted to mention before we start as well. Um, when it comes to my process or coding um, Pico 8 art in general, or really just art in general, uh, my workflow is a little different than when I'm programming for other tasks. Um, I like to, to code in a more haphazard way when I'm doing art because I like to allow for the possibility of interesting bugs and interesting glitches where um, as I'm coding whatever I'm envisioning, sometimes I will make a mistake, see something else, and then think like, oh, that's even better. Like, that's what I should pursue instead. Anyway, with that said, um, we're just going to take it easy, you know, have another short coding session and try to get these rectangles going. Okay, so to start with, we need track the sliding rectangles. So we're going to get a list of rectangles. Example of erect. Now, one thing we need to we do need to look up is rect fill. Okay, it's x zero, y zero, x one, y one, x y x y. Okay, always gotta remember that. Oh, what the? Okay, there we go. Actually, that's right, mostly. Um, so we want x, y, actually I'm just going to simplify this, we're going to say x, y, x2, y2, color. Now, yeah, so we're also going to be tracking the movement of each rectangle. So the first way, as I was saying, would be like if all the vertices wiggle, the way that we would want to code that would probably be something like we don't track the wiggle. Instead, like every, you know, X amount of time or every random chance amount of time, we select one of the vertices and move it down a random amount. Um, alternatively, we can just have a rate, excuse me, we can just have a rate here, like slide rate, and that will be what are what are we what is the speed that each rectangle is sliding down at? There's another question as well, which is do we want the rectangles to be able to slide past each other? I actually don't know. And if I'm thinking about it, the f the faster rectangles will be later in this list of rectangles, which means they'll be drawn after, which means they'll be on top. So it's probably okay to let them slide. For now, let's do this because my initial vision had them all 
sliding at the same rate. The thing is, we're going to have to change the rectangles. So we're um, in order to draw the rectangles, we need a special way to calculate. Um, let me let me show that in Paint. Let me get Paint open here. Okay, so we've got our lines. Um, let me draw like this. Let's say we've got a line like this. If we draw the rectangle, you know, like this. Let's make it a red one. Um, this thing is going to be sliding down. As it slides down, we're going to have to expand this or contract it, depending on whatever the case may be, to reflect that um, that these positions are different. Because if we didn't, we would end up with a situation like this, which we don't want. What we want instead is a situation like this, where the point has changed the x of the x position of the point has changed to reflect this line. So how do we do that? Well, if you remember, every line is defined by the start point and the end point, and it's simply a straight line between the two. So my thinking is we create a function where you give it um, point A, point B, and a height uh, and a height you give it a y and then it will return um, based on just interpolation you know if y equals 64 it knows that's halfway down the screen and it'll basically say like draw a line between point a and point b at what point does um, at what point does it cross y equals 64 at that point what is the x value once we have that function, then getting the correct x positions of the um, rectangles is simple. I think what we would want to do at that point is for every line, we start on the, the line itself and we basically know the x position. We get the x position of the left side and then we just say what is the next line and we get the x position at the same height. The height of the rectangle is controlled by the sliding factor or the slide rate here. So um, I guess basically we're just going to get started on that. So first we need, well, this is something where hopefully, um, I'm like I'm really hoping Copilot is going to help out quite a bit here. So we'll see. Um, first we need a function that will interpolate between two points. This function will be used to get the x values for the rectangles based on the y value and the x values and the imputed x values of the vertical lines. Okay, so now I have to, yes, okay, remember how to define a function. So for the interpolate, we go, we're gonna give it, we're just gonna give it x and y, oh no, no, we give it two points, that's right. We give it x1, y1, x2, y2, and y. Let's rename y height. No, we'll leave it. We'll just leave it as Y. Okay, so let's see what the AI has done here. We've got Y equals MX plus B. Therefore, M equals Y2 minus Y1. So this is getting the average position, perhaps? No, oh, sorry. That's It's just computing the slope. Duh. Um, then we're getting the X. We're getting the y-intercept here but that's interesting 
Well, honestly, I'd rather just test it by seeing what it does. So let's say um, in the rects, let's just put something in the rects for now. No, no, no. Let's say, um, let's make a new loop for drawing rectangles. New loop for drawing the rectangles. For now, debug with just a simple circle. Okay, um, let's say if r greater than 0.5, then and okay. So we're going to add a rectangle. You know, do we even need to track x1, x2? I guess we do because we compute it. Or do we really just need the y values? The y values and the x value of whatever, and the i of whatever line that it's on. So actually the rectangle is going to be the rectangle is not even going to have the y values. No, it does need to have the y values. But we're going to have i y y2. i is going to correspond to which of the lines is this rectangle is this le rectangle's left edge associated with? Okay. Oh, this is kind of the worst part. So we've got y zero starts at zero, y one starts at let's say one so that it's just slightly offset for the color we're gonna make it color eight which should be red um, and then for the y fact we'll just keep it at one that's nice and simple and for I we are going to say random choice Um, this is, that's how you get just the integer floor as a shortcut. So random value, maximum value is length of line tops plus one. That should work. Um, okay, so that's going to add a rectangle at the top. But it's not really a rectangle in this case. Because we're just going to use it to draw a circle. So for I, let's see if it's going to do it. Oh my god. For i1 length rex do, that's true. We got to iterate over the rectangles. So let's let's restart. Let's say for j. What's the most efficient way to do this? I guess we do want to iterate over the rectangles like that. So for i equals one rex two. Okay, get the x values for the top and bottom of the rectangles. So we've got x, y, the point, the line. Okay, how are we defining line tops again? Just stores the x position of the top of the line. Okay, so then the bottom of the line is always 127. So actually, we can simplify this 
by just saying y1 is always 0 and y2 is always 127. Um, I'm not going to bother right now. Okay, so this is x. So this is for. No, no, no. So we don't want line tops at this index, actually. We want rects i 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, wait, no, no. 1. Yeah, no, it is 1. Okay, because this is the i of which line it is. And here we have rex 1, 2. That's the y position. That's y1. Okay, and then this is y2 in the 3 position. That gets us x1, that gets us x2. Wow, it doesn't even want to debug with circles. It just wants to go straight for the rectangles. Got to admire the, the chutzpah. OK, so then we are going to draw a rectangle um, with position x1, rectangle height 2, x2, rectangle height 3. It even, it even wrote something to delete the rectangle if it has gone off the screen. OK, well, let's give this a try. OK, here we go. x2, a nil value. Runtime error line 30. I mean, it's this line, though. Um, x2 is a nil value. Why? 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, OK. 1, 2, 3. So this is a nil value. I gotta test something for i equals one. One do print i and okay, so that does work as I expect. Uh, okay, if length bricks greater than zero. Oh, always. There we go. It's important to stay organized. Oh, that looks so good already. You can see it kind of working there briefly before it fails. Okay, now we're getting the same error computing the slope, which is that x2 is a nil value. But why? Hmm, because this is in the line bottoms. Th because this is too high. No. That was really wishful thinking, huh? A nil value. Hmm. And it's always x2, huh? One, two, three. It's the third argument. One, two, three. Line bots. That's the x position of the bottom of the line. 
and we're getting it at rex i1. There should be a line bot for every line top. If I don't know what it was suggesting there. Just double checking that these are the same. They are. Oh yeah, look at that, you can see. Oh, it's slowing down quite a bit now. Too many rectangles, it's gonna crash eventually. Now there's another interesting thing happening here, which is like, why the heck are the rectangles so tiny? Go eight rect fill. Just going to duck duck go here. Yeah, it really is. Top left. Oh right. Oh, because I'm not thinking about this correctly. The upper left corner, the Y coordinate of the upper left corner, lower right lower right I'm forgetting an important element to these rectangles which is their height so let's add that in um, so first of all we're gonna say that it starts at um, R Eight. That should. Okay. I mean, it looks really cool. And just so we're clear on this, what happens if we get rid of the flip statement? What I don't understand is like, why is the frames per second going up? No, that's the runtime. There we go. Stable 250 frames per second. Completely unnecessary. So what's going on? Like, why is this? What? Ha okay. What happens if we get rid of the dithering? No rectangles, but it is visually interesting. I really like this sort of hyperspectral effect. It is extremely confusing to me though. Okay, let's get the dithering back on. Now this is rect fill. So I'm get rid of that for now. Okay, so the deletion was doing something. Okay, we do need to keep Rex trimmed though. So we're going to remove the rectangles that have gone off the screen in a second loop so that the loops don't interfere with each other. There we go. So I think what was going on here is, mm, hang on. I don't like what I'm seeing. Is it that it's just adding too many too fast?
And I still don't understand why it's not drawing rectangles. X2, Rex1, 3. I mean, that should really be enough to make it work. I do see the issue now, like, I really have to draw it as like lines. Ah, whatever, it's already kind of janky. The, okay, so let me make the problem clear. So, don't save. So what's going on? Okay, well, rect fill is a picoid function that takes x0, y0, x1, y1, and color. Um, x0, y0 define the top left corner. x1, y1 define the bottom right corner, which creates a diagonal, which creates a triangle at a right angle, a similar triangle at a right angle. And then this is the rectangle that gets drawn. So why do we care about that? Well, let's say we've got two lines like this. Let's say the top is here and the bottom is here, and then we draw that rectangle. The rectangle's gonna look like this. Which is not what I want. But fortunately, we don't even have to worry about that right now because it's not even drawing rectangles. So what happens? We just make it something weird. Okay. What's weird to me is like rect is giving me the same results as rect fill. X zero, Y zero. Yes, yes. Two, Rex two, yeah, because two is Y. Then Y two, then the color. So three is the color. Times four is the color, yeah. Hmm. And then somehow also there's this problem, which is like if I don't have that. then it doesn't slow down. Oh my god. No, that's not it. I really thought for a second. I thought maybe the color was the issue. Like, we can change the color to whatever we want. Hmm. I spend so much time debugging. It's actually so much harder to debug and talk at the same time. Okay, so I'll try to just walk through what I'm what I'm thinking. So the problem is this rectangle has no width, which means x1 and x2 are presumably too similar to each other. Ah, uh, yes, I know what's going on. x2 is i plus 1. And this is i plus one. Oh, sorry. This is i plus one. And this is not i plus one. Right? Or is it? This is an i plus one. It's this plus one. There we go. Oh, and not on this one. Okay. Okay. 
Let's go. Then we're going to say and rect i one plus one. So, as you can see, we're having some problems. There's our original plan. So the one weirdness is why are there these super wide rectangles? The interpolation looks good. You can see the rectangles shrinking or expanding as needed. I just don't know why we're getting these like insanely wide rectangles that don't seem to follow the pattern correctly. But in the end, I don't think we're going to spend much time on it. Oh, it's finally slowing down. You can see the overall visual aesthetic that I want though, so I think that's going to work pretty well. That's just a line, you know, it's just drawing a line. Um, okay, stop that. Um, okay, so the problem is our rectangle function sucks. And our rectangles need a height. So we, we have a y1. We actually need to change what a rectangle is here. We have an I, which defines the left side, the left, the left line. Then we have Y, right? There's four points on the rectangle. So I need four Y values essentially. Y one, one, Y one, two, Y two, one, Y two, two. color slide rate. Okay, and then here we're going to actually say add rex ran select a random line to start on. And 0 random random height of about you know max 10. Zero, no, let's say R two minus two. And then here we're gonna say R twelve minus two. Close this out. And we're going to make a new function that draws rectangles in a special way. Need a new function to draw rectangle given four corners. We're going to say custom rect, and it is going to take x, x11, y11 x12, y12, x22. Okay, go ahead and finish me off. That seems right, honestly. Now we're going to go down here and we're going to say so we need, so we have x1. Oh my god, this is going to be so complicated. So let's get rid of. These no, because this is okay. So this is x one, which is our top left position. So this is now x one one, and what was x two is now x two two. So 
for x12, we want this. Oh yes, and for this it's not right, okay. Rectangle definition. Let's just put this down here so it's easier to see. Y one one, Y one one, Y one two is three, four five. So this one should be five. X two one, which should be not two but four. And then to draw the rectangle, we do. Rects x one one rect i one two and actually we're not gonna do this we're just gonna do custom rect okay now let's make this easier to read that's the first corner the second corner the third corner aha And then the color. I don't like the way that looks. Yeah. That is not much better. I should really be <laughs> committing these. Partially working, I'm aware, you know, that's a bit of a stretch. But it is partially working, so. Um, hmm. So what do we think is going on wrong going wrong here? It looks like some of the points are increasing at a disproportionate rate. Not to mention the nightmare of why all these lines keep appearing and never deleting. Guess we can put this back. And we want to say if let's say if the top left corner I mean, it, I can see spires now, which is interesting, but it's a bit abstract. And of course, it's slowing down already like crazy. We're going to deal with that eventually, but first I really want this some rectangle function to work. So let's think about this. Lines have a starting point and an end point. We want to draw a line from one to two. Okay. Two to. Okay, I need visuals. Where's paint? One, 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 two. No, wait, is that true? The rectangles, one, 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 two is the second one that I'm using. I mean, one, two in my mind should be here. I don't know why. I'm probably causing myself problems. Two, one, two, two. So 
we want to draw a line there, a line there, a line there, and a line there. We do not want to draw these lines. Um, so we want a line from from one one to one two, correct? From one two to two two, correct? From two two to two one, correct? From two one to one one, correct? Okay. And then we draw it. X one one, X one two, two 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 one. Oh, what the? Excuse me. Okay. I mean, that's not going to fix it because that just puts it back the way it was before. Still looks cool, but. Let's say So this is just for debugging. This will just make it so that we only get one rectangle. What? The hell. Oh, true. Of course. What am I thinking? Okay, so we're starting to see a pattern here. That one went upside down. The second one is never decreasing. Ooh, fast. And also, these don't look like rectangles so much as just a line. Oh, you know what? Did I forget? I did forget. Aha. Uh -huh. Slide rate. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the slide rate. That's That's working. A lot of triangles. Okay, now why is that happening? So let's uh, let's take this and debug a little bit. Um, and you know what? While we're at it, let's say um, rectangles now. Just rectangles now. Okay, and then here for debugging, we're gonna get rid of this called a random, and we're just gonna start testing out each line. So line is one. I'm not seeing any big, big boys. Okay, and uh, let's 
Let's see, plus one, plus one, plus one. So zero. I mean, we always started at zero. Okay, well, whatever. Let's try zero now just to see what happens. Okay, that's good to know. I mean, I'm a little surprised it works at all, but... This is two. That's the second line. Wow, it really traces the lines. Mostly. It kind of slips up sometimes. <laughs> okay. I am, of course, listening to lo fi anime hip hop beats to chill, relax, and study too. Let's keep testing. Oh! We got one. Okay, so. Oh. Did you notice how it changed? Once it reached a certain height, like it changed back to a normal one. Come on, give me another long one. Okay, well, let's uh, stop debugging with one rectangle. Let's go back to this. Aha, uh aha, -huh. uh -huh. it's when the lines moved. Interesting. Okay, let's go back to random. Oops. I mean, we're so close. Except for this weird bug. Well, actually, there's two bugs. Also, notice how we're never getting the... Uh, this. I think this needs to be plus two. We're never getting the last column, right? Okay, so we're getting two major bugs now. One, bug number one. Let's, you know what, let's take notes. To do. Bug. Um, sometimes the rectangles are just triangles. Bug. Sometimes the rectangles are just lines. Well, you don't have to be mean about it. Let's say feature. Maybe we fill in the rectangles. Bug. Oh, yeah, we do need another feature. Rectangles should be rainbow colored. Rainbow colors. Bug. Um, everything slows down down and flashes as time goes on. Then we've got bug. When the lines move, sometimes we get wide rectangles. Okay, so that's basically what we've got to work on next. We've got three bugs and two features to work on next time. But you can see already just in this one session we made so much progress. Where's my, uh... oh, I closed it. Whoops. Um, but you can see, like, 
we're so much closer to what we originally visualized in the plan. It's just a matter of time now until we get everything working. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you found uh, something to your interest. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment or a question, anything you like, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks very much.